Hosanna. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bethany Congregational Church worship service. And it's a special day of celebration to be back in the sanctuary for the first time since November or early December. And just great to see your faces. And today will be a combined service in uh, Japanese and English. Uh, I think Derek is preaching in English today. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> uh, we have a and we have a guest worship leader today, and so we're really looking forward to our time of worship with all of you. And from now on, uh, we're hoping to continue meeting in here for English services, and once a month, we'll be doing Nichigo services in the Koinonia room, and then we will hopefully scale up to more Nichigo services as time goes on. Uh, again, for uh, uh, Florence Nakamura's memorial service is still postponed until May or June, and we'll let you know about a date for that. It'll be private, but um, we will also be able to view it online. And the Thursday women's Bible studies changed their starting time from 10 to 10.30, starting this coming week. And um, today, right after the service, we have a special event for Natsumi Malin, and uh, so the women are preparing for that. Then um, the young couples group will meet again on Friday, April 16th. We also have some ongoing prayer requests for uh, Kanan and Janet and Bobby and Alyssa and Lucille and Aaron and John Slagle and Kay and Andrea and Tammy and Lloyd and Barbara and um, Dave, friend of Bob and Leo Nakamura's family. So are there other special announcements or prayer requests before I read a scripture for today? No? Um, well, since it is Palm Sunday, I wanted to read a prophecy of Palm Sunday in um, Psalm, Psalm 118, uh, verses 23 to 29. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. And in Japanese, Shihen Ju Hasets, or Ju Hyaku Ju Hach Hen Niju Sansets Kara. Kori wa shu no nasata koto da otashitachi no mei ni wa fushigi na koto de aru. これは主が設けられた日であるこの日を楽しみ喜ぼうああ主よどうぞ救ってくださいああ主よどうぞ栄えさせてください主の皆によって来る人に祝福があるように私たちは主の家からあなた方を祝福した主は神であれ,あられ私たちに光を与えられた枝を持って祭りの行列を組め祭壇の角のところまであなたは私の神私はあなたに感謝しますあなたは私の神私たちはあなたをあがめ,めます主に感謝せよ
主は誠に、ついて、慈しみ深い。その恵みは、とこしえまで。And today we are also praying for the Japan mission and the Verway family. And so with that, let's go to prayer and prepare our hearts. Lord, we are so thankful that we are able to worship here in the sanctuary today. We thank you for a beautiful day. We thank you for the health that you've given us. We thank you that the、uh, COVID numbers are coming down, more vaccines have been available. Lord, we just ask that you would continue to heal our nation, that you would continue to bring this pandemic. To an end. We pray not only for our community, but our country and the entire world that you would have mercy and bring this pandemic to an end. Lord, we also lift up those who are in need of your healing touch and strengthening. We pray for Kanan and Janet and Bobby and Alyssa, and we pray for your strength to come to Lucille and Aaron and John and healing for Kay. And healing for Andrea and Tammy, and for Lloyd and Barbara, and for Dave, and comfort for Leo's family. Lord, we pray for the Verway family that you'd continue to use them to reach many Japanese in Japan and to get your gospel out. We pray, Lord, that many will come to know you. Through their efforts, and we pray you would protect them, pray you provide for all their needs, and give them many opportunities to share your good news. Lord, we pray your anointing upon every part of this service today. Pray you would prepare our hearts, fill us with your spirit, that you would lead and guide Dave as he leads us in worship, and that your anointing would be upon Derek as he brings your word. And Lord, that you would just use all of this service, all of this time. For your glory. We pray your, also your blessing upon our offerings and our tithes and gifts today, and that you would use them to further your kingdom in Santa Barbara and Galita and Carpinteria and around the world. So, Lord, we praise you, we thank you, we sing Hosanna to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, if you can join now. As Dave leads us in worship. Aloha. Woo, I like the response. I was like, ooh, this could fall flat, but I'm going to do it anyways.、Um, I'm a little nervous.、Uh, only been here one other time, and,、uh, and I want to do well.、Uh, I spoke last, you know, I was thinking last night, I couldn't sleep last night, I got to say, because I was wondering, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? And so two things came to mind, and I talked to Pastor Chuck. Go with the second one. And the second one was something I figured out yesterday as I was doing worship with JCC and、uh, your brothers and sisters at JCC, who, who all say hi, actually.、Um, and that's that my job for us to have great worship is for me to be transparent and really to, like, Not be particularly super skillful, not be like brash or、uh, doing crazy things vocally or anything like that. It's just to lead you in worship. And、uh, the Bible talks a lot about how we're supposed to love the Lord our God with all our heart, our mind, and our strength. And,、uh, and so my hope is that when we do worship today, that individually each of you will do that, will find that. When we do the songs that you'll think of, you'll say,、uh, like, for example, we're doing Hosanna.、Um, I see the King of Glory. I hope you do. You know, and, and let that work in you as we go through these songs to like, think about for your personal self who Jesus is for you and all the great things that he's done. So that's my hope. And I think if we do that, we'll have an amazing service, worship service. It has nothing to do with me. It has the, Each of you got to be with Jesus. Okay, so here we go. Hosanna, Hosanna, 
Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth I see his love and mercy washing over all our sins. The people sing, the people sing. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. up to take their place with selfless faith, with selfless faith. I see a near revival stirring as we pray and see. Holy, there. 
shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. praise you, Lord. We give you all the glory. And then we would see you rightly for who you are, all the great things we dimly see through a shadow, Lord, or through a mirror that we can't really see how great you are. But we just thank you so much for how great, how wonderful, how loving, how powerful you are. And we just pray that you would just move us today with this message that Derek speaks. And thank you for these people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Brother Dave. And today's message is from Matthew 21, uh, verses 1 to 11. I'll first read in the English. Matthew 21, 1 to 11. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus...
disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. And in the Japanese... それから彼らはエルサレムに近づきオリブの山のふもとのベタパケまで来たその時イエスは弟子たちを二人使いに出して言われた向こうの村へ行きなさいそうするとすぐにロバがつながれていて一緒にロバの子が色の木がつくでしょうそれをほどいて私のところに連れて行きなさいもし誰かが何が言ったら必要ですと言いなさいそうすればすぐに渡してくれます預言者をそして言われたことが成就するために起こったのである。シオンの娘に伝えなさい。見よ、あなたの王があなたのところに来られる。ニュでロバの背に乗って、それも荷物を運ぶロバの子。に乗ったそれで弟子たちは行ってイエスが命じられた通りにしたそしてロバとロバの子を連れてきて自分たちの上着をその上にかけたイエスはそれに乗られたすると群衆の内大勢の者が自分たちの上着を道に敷きまた他の人々は木の枝を切って切って道にしたそして軍衆はイエスの前を行く者もあなたに従う者もこう言って叫んだダビデの子にホサナ祝福あれ主の皆によって来れる来られる方にホサナ、糸高いところに、こうしてイエスはエ,スエレスルムに入られると、ヤコジュがこぞって、キワギたち、この方はどういう方なのかと言った。軍衆はこの方はガリラエのナザレの預言者、イエスと言った。Good morning. It's so nice to see everyone in the sanctuary and with all the little. Spaces we have in between everybody, it looks like we have a full sanctuary this morning. So it's so great that we can gather together once again and worship. 
And today we join Christians around the world. All over the world, Christians today are celebrating Palm Sunday. And we've journeyed together through the season of Lent, a season of reflection, a season of preparation, a season of um, kind of looking at our own sin, which I think we have done through our uh, studies in the Celebrate Recovery. And we come to Palm Sunday, which is a joyous day, and we commemorate Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And yet there are many more kind of layers to the Palm Sunday story as we look more closely at this text, as we meditate on this text this morning. So as we come uh, together, please join me in a word of prayer. Father, we give you thanks and praise for this another beautiful day that you've given us to come and worship you. And we thank you, Lord, for um, just after a year, pretty much, of not being able to worship in the sanctuary, we thank you that we can come back together as brothers and sisters and gather physically in this place. And we thank you, Lord, for those as well who are unable to join us but are able to join us um, through Zoom and through Facebook. Father, we ask, Lord, as we go to this text, this very familiar text, perhaps about um, your entry into Jerusalem, that you would speak to us anew, that your Holy Spirit would come and would speak to us in a personal way, and that we would, Lord, just be able to meditate today on these words, and Lord, to what really it meant uh, as you uh, came humbly, mounted on a donkey into Jerusalem on that day, and what it really meant for us. Father, we lift this time up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, there's a story about a little boy who was sick on Palm Sunday, and he stayed home from church with his mother. And so his father came back from church, and he was holding a palm branch. And a lot of us, right, we, you, sometimes we hand out palm branches to, to wave on Palm Sunday. And the little boy was curious, and he asked, So, Dad, why do you have that palm branch? And his father replied, you see, when Jesus came into town, everyone waved palm branches to honor him. So we got palm branches today. And the little boy was dismayed. You mean the one Sunday I miss is the Sunday when Jesus shows up? <laughs> Sorry for the bad joke. And I actually used that last year's message but I was sitting in my kitchen, and I had no idea whether everybody was laughing or <laughs> snickering and saying, oh, okay, Derek. So I thought I would use it again so I could actually see the reactions. But all corny jokes aside, let's set the scene for Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Jesus knew that he would make this journey up to Jerusalem, and he knew the significance of the journey. If we backtrack a bit in Matthew uh, to chapter 16, verse 21, we read this. It says, From that time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Jesus would foretell his impending death and his resurrection, he would, that would happen three times. And by and large, the disciples really did not want to accept this. You may remember Peter challenged him on that. And I think partially it was because they fully did not understand what would transpire. And then in Matthew 17, after Jesus had told this, his disciples this for a second time, we read that they were greatly distressed and the day that Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, it's a day of contrasts. It's a day of contrasts. Now, while on one hand, there was a celebratory mood in Jerusalem as, he, as Jesus made his procession into the city, there was also a lot of tension in the air. The disciples, his followers, they really didn't know exactly what would happen to Jesus because he had kept telling him all these things would happen and they really didn't understand what, what exactly would happen. Now the second contrast we see in Jesus coming into Jerusalem 
is on one hand we have Jesus as a king, and on the other hand we have him as a humble servant. Now the preparation that Jesus makes before his entry into the holy city, they're filled with symbolism because Jesus comes in to reveal to the crowds that he is the messianic king. He is the one who they've been waiting for. And as, we, as Pastor Chuck read for us, Jesus sent these two disciples bringing a donkey with her colt. And this was done as a fulfillment of the prophecy in Zechariah 9.9, which says this, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So not only did Jesus riding into Jerusalem fulfill this prophecy, but it also signified his kingship. In the ancient Near East, in in those times, donkeys were actually animals that kings would would make use of as mounts, as animals to ride on. If you go way back in the Old Testament to 1 Kings 133, David prepared to make Solomon the next king, right? And at that time we read this, And the king said to them, this is King David, Take with you the servants of your Lord, and have Solomon my son ride on my own mule and bring him down to Gihon. And so in one way, you see how this was a, an animal that was fit for a king. Yet Jesus coming into Jerusalem on a donkey shows that he came with great humility. It shows that he came in peace. At that time, a king who sought to display military prowess and power would have come into the city on a horse. Uh, there's accounts that Pontius Pilate rode into Jerusalem mounted on a horse. So that would say he was coming in power and saying, I'm in charge here. But Jesus coming on a donkey shows that he came in a posture of great humility. Now Jesus entry into Jerusalem, this story that was read this morning, this doesn't tell us the whole story. It sounds like a great day with celebration and the crowds and everything like that. But we who have read scripture and read further on in the gospels we know what would happen to jesus in the week ahead though he came to jerusalem into jerusalem as a king he would hardly be considered a king in the way that the world considered a king ultimately jesus came into jerusalem to do the will of his father according to what had been written by the prophets And inasmuch as Jesus came to us as a king, he came to us as a servant. If we look at other prophecies in the Old Testament, we see this picture of Jesus as a suffering servant. In Isaiah 53, 7, we read, He was oppressed, he was afflicted, and yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, So he opened not his mouth. And while Jesus uh, on this Palm Sunday, at this triumphal entry, while he was welcomed into Jerusalem as a king, in the events that would unfold later in the week, he would go through great suffering. He humbled himself. He suffered for our sake. We read about this in Philippians uh, chapter 2, verses 7 to 8, which says he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And for Christians today, we may focus, you know, here at Bethany, we haven't had any Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday services in some years, and so it might be easy for us to focus on these two bookends. We have this joyous celebration of Palm Sunday, and then next Sunday we'll have Easter Sunday. But do we take that time to reflect on how Jesus came as a servant, how Jesus gave of himself so humbly, how he endured great suffering, how he endured great pain on our behalf for our sin? 
And so while today we say, yes, Jesus, you are our king, and that is true, at the same time, Jesus came as, our, as a servant. In Matthew 20, 28, Jesus said, even as the Son of Man came, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now the third contrast we see is this reception that Jesus received when he came to Jerusalem. On one hand, there are the crowds who welcomed him as a king, right? In verse 8, most of the crowd, it says, most of the crowd sp spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. And Pastor Chuck and Jan have brought these beautiful palm branches for us this Sunday. You could just imagine all the people spreading these branches out on the road. Now, the crowd's act of spreading cloaks on the road showed uh, that they were honoring Jesus as a king. Again, there's precedent for, you know, taking off cloaks and putting them on the road. If we go back once again to this, this time to Second Kings, we read an account of Jehu being anointed the king of Israel. And in 2 Kings 9, 13, it says, Then in haste, every man of them took his garment and put it under him on the bare steps, and they blew the trumpet and proclaimed, Jehu is king. And so the spreading of garments below the king's feet, they showed respect to say that the king would not step on bare ground. An equivalent of what today you might say rolling out the red carpet, right? When someone comes we of, of great, if the Queen of England came, they might roll out a red carpet. And in the same way, this is how they showed their respect. And then, of course, they took branches from trees and spread them on the road. And in the tradition of the church, we call today Palm Sunday, and that comes from uh, the account in John's gospel. Um, in John 12, 13, we read this. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him. Now, in the Jewish uh, heritage in that time, palm trees were actually a symbol of celebration. They were a Jewish national symbol. Um, in the Roman culture of which Judea was governed at that time, Palms were symbols of triumph. They were symbols of victory. Palms were often depicted on coins. And so as the crowd waved the palm branches, they were, symbolically, they were saying, this is, this, we are honoring you, Jesus, as a king. And not only did they recognize him as a king, they recognized him as a Messiah. They shouted the words, from Psalm 118, which Pastor Chuck read for us earlier, Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And that word Hosanna, what does it mean in Hebrew? It means, oh, save, oh, save us in the Hebrew. And so in one sense, the crowd, there, there was just a little glimpse, as, as, as Dave shared with us a little bit earlier before he led worship for us, the crowd had just a little glimpse, maybe, of who this Jesus was. They, they knew he was one who would come in righteousness and bring salvation, as the prophets foretold. But, of course, the crowd did not really realize what kind of Messiah was coming into Jerusalem. There was a lot of political turmoil at that time in the Roman Empire, I don't know if any of that sounds familiar to us today, but many of the people there were looking for maybe a political savior, looking for someone who would save them from the oppression of the Roman Empire. And yet we know that Jesus did not come for that reason. He did not come to be another Caesar for the Jewish people. He came for a much greater cause to save mankind from their sin, and so it was much more than just what maybe the crowds had anticipated. And not all of the crowd was cheering for Jesus. While there, it says most of the crowd was out there spreading their cloaks and the palm branches, others were really disturbed to find that Jesus was in town. In verse 10, 
of uh, Matthew 21, we read, And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And this is kind of an echo to the sentiment in Jerusalem when Jesus was born. Um, in Matthew 2, 3, if we go back sort of to the beginning of Matthew, it says, When Herod the king heard this, that is, the news of Jesus' birth, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And so the Jewish authorities, they were feeling a little threatened by Jesus' presence. They were, maybe they were afraid that he was going to come and overthrow them. And then if we read on further in Matthew 21, um, after Jesus went into the temple and he did some healing, he healed the blind and the lame who were in the temple, the Jewish authorities were further perplexed. In verses 15 and 16 we read, But when the chief priest and scribe saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children, notice this, the children cried out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant, and they said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies you have prepared praise? And so the ones who were actually shouting praise to Jesus were not the Jewish leaders, these people who were steeped in Scripture, these people who knew the prophecies of the Old Testament from way back. So they would have known Zechariah 9.9. They would have known Psalm 118. And yet the ones who were shouting praise to Jesus were these little children, the very considered the very lowliest in society. These were the ones who were shouting Hosanna to the son of David. And there were also those who welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem, like the crowds who worshipped him as king and Messiah. But on the other hand, there were those who rejected the notion that the Messiah had come. And so we see these contrasts. Palm Sunday is a day of contrasts. There's a celebratory mood as King Jesus rides into Jerusalem, met by a crowd spreading out their cloaks and waving the palm branches. Yes, th yet there is this tension as Jesus repeatedly told his disciples that his journey into Jerusalem would end in his suffering and death. Jesus came into Jerusalem with pomp and circumstance on one hand that befit a king, and yet we also know from the events that unfolded that he ultimately came as a servant, humbling himself to the point of death on a cross. And the crowds that welcomed Jesus recognized him as King and Messiah, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, along with those little children who praised him in the temple. And yet the Jewish authorities were disturbed by Jesus' presence and they would later call for his crucifixion. Now let me ask you this, folks. If we were there, if all of us were there on Palm Sunday, I wonder if we would be like the crowds and the little children, recognizing and honoring Jesus as, as King and Messiah and singing Hosanna to the Son of David. I, think about that. Would you, which group do you think you would be in? And I think it can be easy for us uh, to read this story of Palm Sunday and kind of balk at those. For those of us who follow Jesus as Lord and Savior, we can read through this Palm Sunday and say, look at those Jewish authorities. What was, what was up with them? Why, why were they um, disturbed at Jesus' presence? But haven't all of us been there at some point in our lives? Haven't all of us been in that other crowd saying, who is this? Before we knew who Jesus was as Lord and Savior, before we acknowledged that, maybe we were like those Jewish authorities. Maybe we were like the elders and scribes questioning who Jesus was. And all of us here, folks, all of us, have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And yet, while there are these contrasts, while there was the crowd on one hand and while there were the authorities on the other hand, I think there, there is hope for both. There's hope for both of these groups. The one, 
as G the one who rode into Jerusalem on a donkey on that first Palm Sunday, he came to save us, not to save the citizens of Judea from a complicated political uh, situation in Rome, but he came to save humankind from their sin. And so there's this little blurb from a pastor who said this. Uh, his name is Tom Barnard. He said, the crowd was clueless. They never got it right. They shouted praises. He wept. They looked for a warrior king riding on a white stallion. They got a carpenter riding on a donkey. They wanted hype. They got a healer. They wanted a prophet. They got one who fulfilled prophecy. They wanted a scepter. They got a savior. They got nothing that they asked for, but they got everything they needed. Only they never got it. They were clueless. Jesus was the only one who really knew what was happening on that first Palm Sunday. And it's so easy for us to become like those people in Jerusalem. We think we know what's going on, but we really don't have a clue. We have a bad week and we blame God. Our kids act out and we blame the school. We work two jobs and we wonder why things aren't better at home. Jesus comes to our town and he wants help, but we don't recognize him for who he is. We think he would be impressed with our businesses and our, our money and our things, and he is not. He wants our hearts. That's what Palm Sunday is all about. And that's what Jesus wants, Lord. Uh, folks, he wants our hearts. And so as we celebrate Palm Sunday today, as Dave led us, we sang those words, Hosanna in the highest. Oh, save us. And are our hearts today crying out to Jesus, Hosanna in the highest? Do we acknowledge our need of Jesus that he is our Savior, he's the only one who could save us, that he is our Lord, that he is our King? And so as we go through this holy week, folks, may we be reminded not just of Jesus' kingship, not just of this glorious celebration, but may we be reminded of his servanthood. May we be reminded of his humility. May we be reminded of his sacrifice. May we be reminded of his love for us and what he did for us. And so all he wants is our hearts. So with our hearts, may we join and say, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let's pray. Lord, we just are in awe. We give you thanks and praise uh, for what you did on that day coming into Jerusalem. It seemed to be such a joyous celebration as you rode in and the crowds worshipped you as a king. And yet you alone, O oh Lord, knew what would transpire in that week that um, you would be crucified, you would die, and you would ra be raised on the third day, all for our sake. You humbled yourself for us, you suffered for us, you endured great pain, all on account of our sin, Lord. And all you require from us is our hearts. And so, Lord, we give you our hearts today. We say, Hosanna, in the highest. Oh, save us. And maybe there are those times that we just, we have such a dim view of all that you are for us, Lord. And so help us to reflect, help us to just have gratitude this week as we go through this holy week and that we would meditate on your word and meditate on what you did for us. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand for a final song.
my wife's pointing at my face because I have this thing with them. <laughs> yes. Uh, Pastor Chuck asked if I have a song for Easter, and I do, but I'm not special. He was a special music, he called it. And uh, I'm not special. You guys are. We are special. So uh, I picked a song um, that's a group song. So if you guys can show up early, maybe 9.30ish or something like that, uh, uh, next Sunday, we'll work on the song. It's super simple. It's super powerful, super fun. Um, it'd just be cool if we had a bunch of people who knew it and could help everyone else in a way carry it. Um, but just to let you know, if you can come, Easter, 9.30, singing, because you guys are great singers. I was like, I forgot, because we came to that uh, fair you guys had, and you guys sang, and I was like, whoa, these people sing really good, and they really love it. So I'm just saying, I heard it today, so if you're interested, it'd be super fun, and it would be a song that we could keep doing, and it would just grow in power and be wonderful and fun. All right, let's do it. Get the first song? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory. The king above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your you've done for me who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king above all kings who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. to see you more as who you are. We wouldn't actually worry about things if we knew your power and how you love us and how you have great plans for us. We would have more joy, Lord, if we understood how much you've saved us and how great uh, uh, the other option would have been 
separated from you, Lord. So we just thank you so much. We just pray that we would be a people of peace, that we would be a people of hope, that we would love other people, and that we would have joy in all our circumstances because we have so much to be joyful for. In Jesus' name, amen. Are we going to say the doxology then? This is a, some sending words for Palm Sunday. Passing from joy into sorrow and on to elation, we come to Christ this holy week. Today is only a part of the story. Jesus' triumph leads to his death, his death to his resurrection. May the journey of this week lead you into the fullness of Christ's love. Amen.